Um, so if we look at our trainer's guide again, and what will be, or sorry, our um, learner's guide, and we'll see that we have the um, program TB treatment card here. And the indicator is hospitalized both at uh, initial and continuation uh, stages. Um, so how do we actually go about doing this? Well, let's look at our uh, program to begin with. And we can see here that at the initial diagnosis stage that we have the, um, uh, we actually have two different uh, data elements here. And when we look at the, um, the type of treatment, we go here, you can see that the type of treatment for hospitalized, right? Uh, this, tells us, uh, this tells us if it's a facility-based uh, or community-based type of treatment or if it's self-administered treatment. But this patient has been hospitalized and we'd want to know in our indicator how many patients like entered this program uh, hospitalized and were still hospitalized uh, during the next phase. So if we look, if we look and open this uh, continuation stage, we can see that the type of treatment is hospitalized still. So we want to sort of uh, see this um, uh, cascade of care or this, uh, this linkages between the initial diagnosis stage and the continuation stage, how many people were still hospitalized, right? Um, and so this is a little bit different from the previous indicators, which were only looking at data which were entered into one discrete event. Um, now we have to look at data that have been entered into two different events. And so how does this work exactly? Well, let me go back to our program indicators here, and we'll create a new one for that. So I want to walk through how to create um, this program indicator, and then we'll take a short break, and you can do this enrollment type indicator on your own. And then we will go through two additional exercises about enrollment indicators after that. So hold off on creating this one right now. Just um, absorb the different steps that are taken, and then you can do this one on your own. Okay. So in the very first phase here, now we're going to be um, naming this, um, our initials, then hospitalized, initial and continuation, two different stages, continuation, one stage. So I'm going to say, um, yo, all treatment realized, and then, all cost per, per code or something, right? Once again, we'll skip over the color and icon options that we have here. Um, in the description, we can um, say a little bit more about this. So um, patient must be um, hospitalized at um, both the initial case report and continuation. Right. Again, we'll skip the decimals because this is essentially a count. Um, and for the aggregation type, again, we are still counting up the number of patients, right? So each enrollment would only get a count of one. And if we are counting this up the organization and hierarchy, then this would still be a, um, a count of one. We are counting the total number of patients, right? So now when we go to analytics type here, <clears throat> Again, this is where things get a bit different than we've previously seen, sorry. <clears throat> so we have the event type, but these data come from two different events. So event type won't work for us here. Now what we use is the enrollment analytics type. And you can see that the analytics period boundaries are also different here. So now our boundary targets are um, the enrollment date after and the uh, after the start of the reporting period and enrollment date before the end of the reporting period. I won't go into much more detail again on analytics uh, period boundaries, but I think it's important to note at this, uh, at this stage that um, the enrollment date will, will tie um, your case to the period. So if you had a patient who was enrolled in January and then their continuation visit was in February, a month later, and then you were looking up the total number of cases in pivot tables, this patient would count 
account for January because their end date fell in January. This sort of hints at what analytics period boundaries um, get into and what they allow you to do. But um, for now, let's move on from um, the analytics type and the analytics period boundaries and go to our expression. So once again, um, we have a question of what we are going to be putting into the expression, right? So what is the final calculation that we want to make on this enrollment? So I'm not going to put um, the event count now, right? Because this actually isn't counting the number of events that meet this criteria. This is counting the number of enrollments that have these data values for hospitalized in the initial case report stage and the continuation stage. So uh, I'm actually only gonna count once per enrollment. So what I need to put here is not event count, what I need to put is enrollment count. And so this is going to output a value of one for the enrollments that meets these criteria, okay? Now let's go into filter. So this is actually a bit similar to what we had with our uh, previous program indicators, except for one key difference. Now our data are coming from two different program stages. So I select initial diagnosis here, and I say that this is a um, type of treatment on the initial diagnosis stage, right? Eggs hospitalized. I'm, I'm going to check the option set in just a second, but just to demonstrate, we do this here, right? Um, you may be wondering um, uh, what these um, encoded values are here. What is this gibberish? This is actually the UID for the stage uh, where this value comes from and the UID for the data element uh, where this value comes from. And so we will see here that when we say uh, initial diagnosis stage, uh, type of treatment equals hospitalized, and then we add continuation one stage type of treatment, I will say, and here, oh, someone's drawing on the screen. <laughs> uh, so please stop that. Um, and if I say the uh, continuation stage equals hospitalized, we will see that the UIDs for the data element, right, are the same. So this is the data, same data element type of treatment, but the UIDs for the stages, these part here, these are different. And this is also reflected in the, um, in the uh, interpretation that we have of our uh, filter here that's made for us. So type of treatment, initial diagnosis stage equals hospitalized and continuation one uh, type of treatment equals hospitalized. Okay. Um, just think there's anything else to add here. I don't think that there's anything else that we uh, need to add for this one right now. So I am going to click save and then we can make sure that this was noted. Um, oh, right, I remember now. I needed to make sure that um, the option for this one is actually hospitalized. So I'm going to go into the option set management and see that the TV type, <coughs> treatment type equals hospitalized. Yes. So the name for this option set, or this, for this option, the option set is the exact same as the code which is um, how the data are stored in the DHIST database. Okay. Um, so again, going to save this, and now I'm going to do what we did earlier and check the pivot table app. I actually have it here already. So I am going to refresh and make sure that I can see these um, <laughs> hospitalized, initial, and continuation. Hospitalized, initial, and continuation. And we can see that the program indicator value that we just generated together is the same as the correct value 
that was uh, pre-generated earlier. So we followed all the right steps to calculate this value. And we can interpret this value to say that 21 patients who were enrolled in 2021 um, were hospitalized when they first entered the program. And during the continuation stage, they were still hospitalized, okay? Um, so now I'm going to uh, pause there and you can walk through the steps for creating an enrollment type program indicator on your own. And we will come back just in, in five minutes and uh, see where we are with this and go into a couple more advanced uh, enrollment type program indicators. Oh, I don't see that. Um, examples. We're going to move on to two additional examples now. Um, but for those of you that are still struggling with um, any of the first four indicators that we have discussed, again, please feel free to mention that in the, the Zoom chat or the, the Slack channel, and we can uh, help you with them. So uh, before we begin our, our next uh, program indicator exercise on um, weight change, um, I want to review something from the slides that uh, were presented earlier. So if you see that uh, there are some um, specific scenarios in which uh, we might be able to use program indicators, right? And I said that we can perform a percent uh, calculation in which values are stored in the same enrollment or change in value across an enrollment. We might want to compare values um, that are entered for the same enrollment um, and we can even, as we saw in, um, in the maintenance app earlier, um, show this program indicator in the form so that you can dynamically see an indicator updating um, while you are creating a, um, an enrollment and entering data. Another thing to discuss, and we didn't go so much into um, filters and what they are, but um, a filter essentially specifies exactly what we want to include in our program indicator, right? Which events or which enrollments uh, do we want to have included? Um, and so filters are applied to the set of events within the program um, before the indicator expression is being evaluated, right? I think this part is, um, is pretty key to understanding um, because we'll be doing something a little bit different with the indicator expression in this example. So again, the filters are applied to the set of events or enrollments within a program by going through each individual event before the indicator expression is evaluated, right? Um, if it evaluates to false, then the event or the enrollment is ignored. Um, so when we look again at this um, program indicator, this is the percent weight change um, across the TV program. And the aggregation type will be the average. So these are a couple of things to keep in mind while we uh, construct this indicator. Um, but just to get started, there are a, actually I think there's a, um, another couple of additional um, points here as well. Um, this should calculate the difference in weight between the initial diagnosis and end of treatment program stages. When the culture result is negative and the treatment outcome is either cured or completed. Right? So this means that we also need to include a filter here for when the cult result is negative, and also in the filter for the treatment outcome is either cured or completed. Okay. So I'm going to go back to our program indicators here. TB treatment card. You can see all of the work that's been done already. And I'm going to create a new program indicator for this change in weight. So maybe the uh, details here might be um, okay. initials, weight change, end of treatment, and initial diagnoses. Okay. Um, maybe also I can see in here, just as one quick example, sorry to jump around, but uh, initial diagnosis, you see it has weight here in the initial diagnosis stage. And also at the end of treatment, there's weight as well. Okay. So we're going to be drawing from these two different 
uh, program stages. So the short name, I may just, just make this rate change. Okay. And now the description, uh, the in wait for the end of treatment and initial diagnosis. Um, excluding, let's see this from earlier, the uh, culture result is negative. I cured. Ah, sorry, not excluding, it's um, only when the culture result is negative and among patients who are cured or completed. Okay, so again, here, uh, we have a few different uh, components for this program indicator, right, which make it a bit interesting. So here, the aggregation type is actually not going to be the count because I don't want to count the, or, I don't want to count the number of um, uh, cases that had a change of weight during their, um, their treatment. I actually want to count, I actually want to average um, the average change in weight for each patient um, from the beginning to the end of their treatment cycles. So I don't just want to account to give me the number of people who added weights, that does not very interesting. Um, I don't want to sum it up to get the summary of changes of weights. I want to get the average patient weight, right? Again, this, uh, this analytics type is not going to be event because the data are found in multiple discrete stages. Um, so we're going to use the enrollment analytics type. And again, here we can see that our analytics period boundaries are from the enrollment date um, after start of reporting period, enrollment date before the end of reporting period. So, Remember earlier we saw that we would skip this uh, display inform checkbox, right? And so we can think about what this actually means is that if we go into our capture app, right? We can see that there's a number of different boxes here that might show up and looking into um, show hide widgets. There's also a indicators box as well. Here we use this to display the patient's age, for example, right? But we can add a number of other program indicators to this box as well that might dynamically update as we enter more program data. Okay. So I'm going to check off display and form just to see what happens when um, we enter in data for this uh, program indicator while we are um, entering in uh, while we're entering in data. What happens to this program indicator? Okay. Again, our expression is going to be unlike the, the previous um, program indicators that we've worked with, right? Um, because the expression is going to actually be, um, is actually going to be the difference of weight uh, from the end of the treatment to the uh, beginning of the treatment, right? So let's look at this again. Uh, difference in weight between the initial diagnosis and the end of treatment. Initial diagnosis uh, weight. Yes. Sorry. So diagnosis minus uh, end of treatment. Okay. Now in the filter, so the uh, the final output will be this uh, difference between these two uh, these two data element values found in two different stages. Now the filter, remember from this uh, previous discussion on filters, is that the filter is applied before you do any additional 
um, calculations in the expression. So really you can think about working from the filter backwards. So um, again, we are going to be, um, we're only going to be including those that have a, uh, a negative, um, in, in, we're going to be, sorry, uh, excluding those, including those when the culture result is negative um, and the treatment outcome is either cured or completed. So the culture results, I'm going to add equals. Right? So this part is fairly straightforward that the culture result that we see in the tracker capture app, I go back to ca tracker capture. Yeah. Culture result is negative, zero columns. I think it's actually the same here. So it's negative. zero colonies. Um, right, negative zero colonies. And the treatment outcome is either cured or completed treatment, right? So now I'm going to add the second condition to this filter. So it's and, and now we have a, a, these two additional um, conditions are using an or statement, right? So it's very important that we consider using brackets appropriately um, to make sure that we need both negative and uh, a second condition, which is either two different data values. So either, um, should I, this is, um, Treatment, treatment outcome. Yep. End of treatment. Treatment outcome equals cured. And I add an or. Or, and now I can just uh, add that again here. Or treatment outcome equals completed. And I'm going to close the parentheses. Okay. So before we do this calculation on the um, on the weight change that was made uh, during the progression of treatment, first we're going to eliminate all of those uh, enrollments that do not meet these criteria. So if um, if the initial diagnosis uh, was it not was uh, was negative and the, um, it's not negative, and the um, end of treatment outcome was not uh, completed or cured, right? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to um, save this and we're going to see what it looks like um, in the, program. So I'm going to clear my cache here. Just to make sure that this shows up in the program. We can see what happens now. And TB treatment card. Register a new case. Test. Weight change. Okay. Say so treatment. A type of patient is new. The disease site is extrapulmonary. And I'm going to say the culture result is negative zero colonies. And I'm going to say that the Weight is um, let's say eighty. The initial stage, okay. Is that the initial diagnosis? Maybe I'll make this one day before.
Now I'll just make this continuation one stage and I will change the weight classification. And I'll say that this is uh, one weight. Maybe I messed up the, um, the options for this indicator. So I will just quickly check that. That's probably it. Um, let's see here. So let's go change. Okay, so now I'm just going to check the um, the options again. So option set is um, for culture result. Equals negative zero colonies. And then um, the end of treatment, treatment outcome. I will check that option set now. Ah, there's actually treatment completed as well. So this was actually different. Let's check the, uh, the option set codes. I think I also needed to say what the, uh, the final weight change was here as well. So I'm just going to clear the cache and come back to um, this last test case. Test, right change, new weight change. One, 100. But I actually need to go to the end of treatment stage. Let's go save there, right? I'm going to say that their weight change is now 100 and their treatment outcome is cured. Okay. Change in weight for the end of uh, treatment and initial diagnosis only when the cold result is negative and patients who are cured or completed. Cured or treatment completed. Okay. So this is uh, taking us actually, um, it's the difference between the, uh, the weight at the end and the weight at the uh, beginning. So if I say that this was actually 120, then you'll see that this uh, changes to a positive number. Um, so now we can go through um, doing this one on uh, on our own, and then hopefully, if we uh, if we have time in uh, in the next um, ten minutes or so, then we can get to these uh, super indicators. So I'll give you um, five minutes to try to uh, catch up to this, and then we can um, do the final section on uh, combining the indicators together. Okay, so I see that a, uh, a number of you have managed to um, create a program indicator for the weight change here. Let me just make sure I log in. Some of you have managed to make a program indicator for the, the weight change. Um, that's great. Um, we can also take the final step here of not just looking at it in the, um, the tracker capture data entry uh, form, but also looking at what it looks like um, once we aggregate up, okay? So I will just look here again at the um, different program indicators that we have created in the Pivot Tables app. And I will see the uh, weight change, uh, end of treatment and initial diagnosis. I think again, sorry, I, I think I flipped, uh, flipped the, the, the around earlier. So there it's... Uh, Total of zero. 
this should be um, calculating to something uh, smaller than that, but it actually, um, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe there weren't data for that in those uh, those periods. Maybe I'll say this year as well. No, okay. So we can come back to that. Maybe um, Nick has a, an answer for um, what happened here. But um, from if we look at the weight change, final mass initial. Yeah, that one was calculated uh, correctly. And we can see that there is a difference in the weight change for 2021 and 2022. So we can see that this is a, an average over all of the different uh, cases here. Okay. Um, yeah. So one last um, program indicator that we have here is uh, the combined indicator. And for this one, um, we will actually need to be using um, DHIS2 analytics. So um, we won't be testing this one um, just now, but it's still helpful for us to go through the steps for, um, for creating this indicator together. So again, the program is the, the TB treatment card. And now we're going to be building a percentage and that's a TB incidence rate per 100,000, okay? So again, if we look back to down to our, um, can look into more detail about what this is with a TB in incidence rate per 100,000, we want to calculate the TB incidence rate per 100,000 population. This is equivalent to the number of new TB cases divided by the total population times 100,000, right? So in order to do this, let's walk through some steps here. Um, we will not be using the uh, program indicator section here because we already have a program indicator for new TB cases. Look here, TB new cases, right? So this one has already been generated and it counts the number of uh, new cases that have been, um, that have been shown, right? So TB patient type equals new. So we're not going to do that. We're going to sk skip ahead just, uh, just a little bit and we're going to create a new indicator. So that means that we're leaving the realm of program indicators and we are now within aggregate indicators. These are generally used for um, for percentages, for example. So here for the name, you might make this one um, TB incidence per 100,000, right? TB incidence. Again, we're going to skip the color and icon. But if we look at the description here, we can actually just you know copy and paste over this um, this longer description that we had. Number of new TB cases divided by total population times one hundred thousand. Uh, we'll also skip over um, annualized here. Um, there are some interesting things that we can do with a, an annualized type indicator, um, but I refer you to the, uh, the documentation for how to do that. It's a bit of a specialized statistical uh, term that we don't use that, uh, as often. Um, decimals and data input, we will leave this as the uh, standard. And now when we come to the uh, indicator type, um, this one is uh, is pretty essential to just uh, to just double check. So here we have the different types of uh, indicator types, and that's a uh, per hundred thousand. So you can create your own indicator types in your DHIS two system to be percentages or per one thousand or per a million, for example. Um, and when we click down here, we can see that the demo system already has 
uh, numerator only uh, per, per 1,000, per 100,000, right? And we're, we're going to make this per 100,000, OK? Um, we will skip over the legends, URL, et cetera. But what's uh, really important about the uh, indicators is the numerator and denominator. So we're going to go to the numerator here. Right? And those of you who are familiar with uh, DHIS2 aggregate indicators, this might look a bit familiar because it's essentially the same process. But we will create the description for the numerator as new TV cases. And we'll go to programs. And uh, now we can actually select a program indicator that we've just created or we already have generated for the TB treatment program. And we can use that within our percentage indicator, within our, our indicator for um, prevalence of TB. So we have to scroll down here, but we can see all of the, all of the program indicators that we've already created. And I go to um, TB new cases. Right. So I move that over and you can see that this is the, the UID, the code for the, uh, the program indicator for TB new cases. And um, the preview for what this is shows up here. And we can see that this is also a valid expression. Um, there are a number of different things that you can also do when calculating indicators, which again, we'll refer you to the documentation um, for things like uh, is null values or creating logs or period offsets. These are a bit advanced for what we'll do today. Um, also things that you can include like org unit counts for different areas, uh, constants, uh, data element values, um, drag identity attributes. But for our purposes, we're mostly interested in comparing a program indicator value of the new TB cases, so I'll select down here, with a population level denominator, okay? So going back here, we can see that the, um, the denominator will be the total population, right? So this uh, denominator for total population might be entered as part of a census or it's a standard part of your HMIS, but this is essentially getting a sense of the, um, the catchment area or total population for a service area that is administering to TB patients. So for this, we're going to go to data elements over here once again, right? And I'm going to um, select total population, just start searching for it, and it'll show up here. Total population. So I move that over. And this might be like a, an annual or a, a monthly data element or an, and a data set that can be entered that will um, have the total population for a a given um, organization unit area, whether that's at the district or national level. Okay. So now I'm going to select done. Right. So this uh, description again tells the whole story here. So it's the number of new TB cases divided by the total population times 100,000. So I've just saved that indicator. Um, TB incidents per 100,000. I also need to add my initials to that. I have to apologize. So because we've just uh, created a indicator and not a program indicator, um, the in indicators are not generated on the fly, which means that uh, we cannot um, create a, the same way that we just tested our program indicators, we created one and then we immediately checked the, um, the pivot tables app to see the results. Um, this isn't a dynamic query that's generated in the database when we request uh, information on the indicators. Um, the, we actually need to run the analytics tables in DHIS2 first. Um, we don't have these custom jobs. So we'll go to administration. So we're going to go into data administration. 
and we will run our analytics tables. This should be quick since there's not a whole lot of data, but depending on the size of your DHS2 database, this can actually take quite a while. So um, generally it's best to um, produce and test these types of indicators on a development environment and then import them into your production environment. Otherwise the, the testing process can, can take quite a bit of time. Right, so we've just uh, completed um, updating our analytics tables. It took about 20 seconds. And now we can see what this looks like in the pivot tables app. Okay, so here's indicators. I'm not going down to program indicators. Didn't put it into a group. TV incidents. 100,000, okay? And I'm going to select as my period of last year and my organization unit as training land. So let's see what happens, okay? So I have correctly configured this, um, this program indicator to be TB incidents uh, per 100,000 to match the, uh, the pre-configured uh, indicator. So the correct value is um, 15.6, uh, of the population times uh, 100,000. So the incidence is, is much lower than 15.6% since it's per 100,000. As we mentioned, there's other ways that you could use this for um, not just having a population denominator, um, but if you were to go into the, um, the indicators and see it's available, so for example, in a denominator, you could also put something like um, uh, total new TB cases, um, TB new cases in the denominator. Okay. And then in the numerator, you could um, do another type of disaggregation that you might have had earlier. So, um, so new, new pulmonary cases, for example. Oops. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of TB new cases, yeah. New pulmonary TB cases. Just add that over here. So this would give you the percentage of all new cases that were pulmonary in a given month and uh, organization unit, or given period organization unit. You can say percentage there, right? So that's another example, just very quickly, of how you can use uh, indicators in combination with program indicators uh, to provide an additional level of analysis on your data. Um, we have about um, 15 minutes left, so I will now hand it over to uh, Shurajit for the final closing. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Um... And what we'll do now before we close, we'll just give you kind of a couple of minutes to have a look um, at the exercise for this one. Um, we would really appreciate if you don't go into the analytics and run that, if you all run it, it the, the system's gonna just, just fall over for sure. Okay, so um, don't, uh, in the learner's guide, it kind of gives you the steps to follow um, um, when you're doing the exercise and we'll give a couple of minutes uh, to do that then I'll explain so um, we'll give about you know five seven minutes uh, for that okay um, and then we'll come back and I'll explain um, what we'll do um, when we come back together all right so this is the final exercise in the learner's guide um, that you can have a look at here I'll pull it up 